Hello, this is Black Country Blokes chewing the fat. Listen, listen, listen. I've been hearing a lot lately about men don't talk. But in my experience, men do talk, just people aren't listening. So it's going to be me and a group of blokes discussing our struggles and victories through life. Warning, there may be some bad language, so apologies to all the mums, especially my own. Let's get going. Listen, listen, listen. Ah, Binya, this Black Country Blokes chewing the fat with me, Kev Dillon, Lee Cadman, and we're joined by our last guest of the week, Ian Hines from Mental Health First Service, CIC. Now, Ian uh, is one of the big parts of these Mental Health First Aid courses that I keep going on about. And we've asked him to come on today to talk about like some of the early signs, if it's maybe yourself, one of your loved ones, work colleagues or friends. So we're going to be talking about signs where maybe someone's feeling depressed or even to the extreme case of maybe suicidal. So thank you, Ian, for coming on again, bruv. Pleasure. Thank you. So if someone, let's start from the bottom and work our way up. So some of the signs of like depression, yeah, yeah, you tend to have 10 main signs with depression. Um, and, and really, that's how they work out how severe your depression can be from sort of mild to moderate to severe. And you'd have so many of these symptoms. So I'll just go through a few of them for you. So you've got lack of confidence and self esteem. Um, stop me at any point if you want to discuss any of these while we're going through them. Um, so I'm sure we will, we, will, we will experience them ourselves at some point. Feelings of guilt. When, it's, when things aren't actually your fault, you're actually feeling guilty about stuff and managing to internalise stuff and make it your fault, maybe keep you down, yourself down there a little bit, keep you in that depression. Suicidal thoughts and, and wishing you weren't alive. Uh, difficulty in making decisions or concentrating. I mean, I don't know if that's anything you, you guys have experienced. Oh, yeah. You know, you've seen Tom. Um, obviously, being able to concentrate and make decisions is a big part of life isn't it and if you find yourself you can't do it and then you are doing it you're finding you can't really trust those decisions or make you maybe making bad ones um so yeah that's that's another one pessimistic views of the future um well, it's what we talk we teach on the course Kevin of course that you use on yourself you know if you talk to somebody about how they're feeling and you want to try and especially gauge where suicide might be coming into suicidal thoughts He's talking to them about the future, asking what plans they've got, any holidays, or what the football team they, they support, might, where you think they might be. He gives you a bit of a gauge of where they, they might be in their lives. Do you, do you know what I mean? Well, I think um, at the moment, sorry to interrupt you, mate, but I think at the moment, because of lockdown, people are yeah. feeling guilty because I feel guilty because I'm working from home, so I'm not spending time with my children, or I feel guilty that I'm not providing, or I feel guilty that I'm drinking too much and I think guilt is such a massive part of the world at the moment. Yeah, I think you're completely right. Um, for, for, for the start, see, people, it, it was a bit of a novelty, wasn't it? And, and you know, don't get me wrong, people were, were, were worried and what have you, but it then it's got to the point where I think people, are, you know, they've not been able to homeschool the kids the way they want to because they have to work themselves. They're finding they're shouting at the children more than normally would, but the kids are bouncing off the walls, aren't they? Um, and then you sit there at the end of the day thinking of how you've, you've conducted yourself with your children and your wife. And what you've got to think about, I suppose, in a lot of this is <clears throat> a lot of couples before would have the the, re the the release and the getaway of going to work, wouldn't they? And mm -hmm. then and then back at the end of the night, people have been thrown into, you know, spend a lot more time with each other, more than they ever have probably, apart from holidays. And people, take, people tend to rub each other the wrong way, don't they? So then you've got the guilt that comes into that as well. Um, so yeah, guilt's a massive part of it, isn't it? And like, and say so like looking towards the future. If they said we were going to be locked down for a month, then you go. Well, in a month's time, we're all going to go to on holiday. Or we're going to Butlins, or we're going to go to Dudley Zoo. But when the when the line keeps moving, it's hard to look forward when you don't know when forward is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, we're in, in uncharted territory, aren't we? I, funny enough, while this has been going on, I've, I've still been going out to, to sites and depots and stuff like that and speaking to people. So I've, I've got, I've managed to get quite a good understanding of where people are at, really. And a couple of people I've spoken to, some of them are supposed to be getting married, mm. you know, and this is the, this one of the happiest times of their life. And they, the, the problem they're having is they, you know, they've got people coming over from Ireland or something like that. So they don't even cancel flights. It's so hard to try and put it all back in. 
and then you've got these two poor people who, who, who kind of have the happiest day of life, and they can't do it now. And then you've got, <clears throat> you, you know, you got you feel like you're letting each other down. There's, there's all this stuff that's going to, you know, when you sit there and you think, well, how's actually this COVID-19 actually going to affect us mentally? You know, okay, we're going to be a bit lonely, whatever. But it's all that under underground stuff, isn't it? That that stuff you said to each other in, in, in the heat or something when, you know, you're supposed to be getting married, something like that, and you feel like you've let her down, she feels like she let you down. And it's not it's not real, it's not actually happening. You can't help it, can you? But there's gonna there's a lot of stuff gonna be going on that we've not even seen happening. Yeah? Yes, bang on, mate, bang on. Um so yeah, so pessimistic views of the future, you know, it's it, it's hard to try and it's hard to try and be um positive at the moment because we don't know where we are. Um, I think this is a bit quite a big one as well, which is you know not sleeping enough because all our sleeping patterns off, mm. uh, or sleeping too much. Some people can just just sleep at the drop of a hat, can't they? Um, and some people can't. But I mean, I, I see it with my son. You know, normally he'd be in bed by a certain time after his bath and what have you, but he's staying up later. He's getting up later, and it's just it knocks all of your all of your, your um your patterns off, doesn't it? A little bit. So well, yeah, I know. I know a lot of people who are doing that because they haven't got to get up. So they're staying up on Netflix, YouTube, computer games. Because in their mind, well, what's the point of waking up? And when you start losing that routine, that throws everything out of kilt, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's your structure, isn't it? You've, you've all got our structure. Up where we, you know, I, I can normally wake up before the alarm goes off. Yeah. Um, but you do find yourself more thinking, well, the roads are quieter, so I can leave half an hour later. Got to get, you know, I went to London, so it's going to take me two hours to get to London. Whereas North Force took me three and a half hours. I can leave a little bit later. And it's all not, it's all great at the time. It's, it, it's, it, once it comes back into the full flow of how it's, I mean, I was in central London the other day driving around, it was a ghost town. Mm. But when anything comes back to normal, you're not going to be able to, you're going to have to relearn your system all over again, aren't you? You know, so it's going to be, going to be quite difficult. So, yes, sleeping, I think, is going to be a real big one. No interest in food or eating too much. I mean, I've seen some quite funny things with people putting things in fridges, you know, and then they're opening the fridge and it's saying you're not, <laughs> there's a sign that's saying you're not hungry, you're just bored, go and sit down. Because people yeah. just, just go to the fridge, I mean, just eat it. You know, I went shopping with my wife the other day and we're spending that much more money on food now. Yeah. Because you're just sat in the house all the time, aren't you? And you're just picking. Or mm -hmm. if you go to work, you need to take pack lunches because you can't get anything to eat out there. It's not getting too bad now. It's getting better. But, you, yeah, you know, you, it's 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 absolutely horrendous, the, the amount of food we're buying. And we're eating it as well. But then on the other side, I suppose, there's a lot getting thrown away. So then you, you, it's, there's a lot of waste as well, isn't there? Um, so, yeah, so in, no interesting food or eating too much. And then what we've, we've got the we've got the fitness situation, and I mean, and, and how our self-esteem has been affected because we're probably feeling a little bit heavier than we normally do. Yeah. Um, sad moods that won't shift or go away. I don't know if you've had any experience of that or you've been talking yeah. to anybody who might be getting that. You imagine that if you're someone that does normally suffer with sad moods and 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 and, and um, moods that won't go away, and you've you've got in touch with a counsellor or you've got somebody you can talk to, you find your support network. Yeah. You probably can't speak to them anymore. You know, there's a lot but of people out there who are using therapy. They're doing it online, don't get me wrong, but there's it's not, therapy online is nowhere near the same as it is when it's face to face. But that's also really like, even if it's just like going to a boxing club or going to play football, because you're getting out there and your coach is your surrogate father, and you can go and lamp the bag, but go, yeah. you know what, me and our kids going for a real bad patch or whatever. You've got that person who you trust, but you can go and Get out of your home, get away from work, and just go. I'm here to be a daddy or a mommy, whoever you are. I've gone there to vent and have a rattle to someone who cares about me. Yeah, yeah, and get some. Sometimes get some some clarity on, on, on how you're actually feeling. Because if you if you're lost in your own head and your own feelings, you can get angry and get vindictive and get spiteful. And sometimes you need that person to actually sit next to you and say to you, "Look, I understand where where, where you're going, but." Maybe you, you focus a little bit too much. Somebody who just gives you a little bit of, you know, gives you that bit of that bit of guidance to maybe look the right way because we can get lost in our own heads, can't we, and get angry and stuff and, and stay in it unless somebody actually we trust out there pulls us out of it. 
so yeah so yeah sad moods that won't go away and i suppose my concern is that with that being untreated sad moods do you imagine if you're a guy sitting at home and you don't know where the next paycheck is coming from you, you know you, you're hearing a lot of people now they're on the, they're on the fifth time now they've done mr paycheck people aren't getting paid um and then you got to worry about being evicted and how's it going to happen when it all comes out that is a horrendous place to be isn't it thinking that you're sitting at home thinking i don't know how long she's going to be at home you know, Actually, this really resonates with me, Ian. Um, my wife came on this podcast a couple of weeks ago now, and she mentioned on there that I, I used to go in a funk, and for three days I wasn't angry. I wasn't. I was just didn't want to be around anyone, be with anyone, and literally for three days I'd just sit in bed or sit on the sofa and not really do anything. Um, and I found the way that I um counteract that and 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 get myself moving again there's number one going up the boxing club and number two doing this podcast and actually sharing these things with 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 care with whoever's on and whoever's listening um and that was a big turning point for me and i haven't been like that for quite a while now i haven't felt the need to to just you know i'm, I'm able to talk to people now whereas i didn't i wasn't talking to people before um and people who understand you know i know that other people have gone through this and, and, and go in these funks. But I've also found that actually during the lockdown, my experience is different to a lot of people because my youngest daughter is severely disabled. It's just given me time away from work, off, off that uh, rotating wheel, you know, of life that just keeps you working and keeps you going uh, and actually being able to spend time with them. Mm. So to me, and don't get me wrong, we, we, we have to worry a bit about money, but it it's, doesn't pale in comparison to the time that I'm getting. Yeah. I do you know what? I, and this is going to, I, without, I don't want to try and say this saying make it sound perverse, but I've got really envious of some of the people who've been on furlough sometimes because some of it's been really positive. They've said, like, you know, I've spent five five weeks. I've got a friend of mine who I've watched him, you know, he, what he does with his, his little boy and might have him talk to ride a bike taught him to play you know bits of the piano and stuff like that and when i say envious that isn't a bad way just like you know what he's really used his time effectively and he's going to come out of this with knowing that he's secure at work because he's got his works for a decent place everyone's fine and i suppose he'll come out of it you have to look at the other side of me he'll come out of it with it was actually quite a positive experience for me although it was scary we couldn't see our grandparents and that sort of stuff he actually got time to, to sort of bond with his child with, in, in a way that he's not been able to before so there, there is some positive too, I suppose, isn't there? But I mean, going back to what we say, it's it, it's it's a scary place to be, isn't it? Not knowing your future, and, and that was the future of, of you and your family because of the financial situation. And so that's going to have a massive impact on how we're going to be feeling. Yeah, definitely, it is. It is, but it's a, it's also interesting that there is um, different points of views on that. Um, it, it's definitely, although. Although we need money, it's I've definitely realised it's not the be-all and end-all. And hopefully coming out of this, I won't throw myself into work quite the, the way I did before and have realised I'm needed at home more. You know, yeah. uh, I enjoy being at home more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I completely get that. It, it, it's it, it's good, isn't it? It's just, I think there's been a lot of good come out of what, what we're in at the moment. You know, seeing how people have pulled together. You know, my wife, she goes a bit of shopping for people in the road. We actually, I actually got to meet people in my road the other day that I've never met. I've been here 15 years um, because we actually go out and clapping or, you know, we, we, we sort of done a bit of social distancing. We had a drink um, on VE day. And there's people that I've, I've, not, I've never even met before. Mm. So it's some strange things, quite this crazy situation, don't they? But you've got to cling on to them, I suppose. So, so yeah. Sorry, go it's those people who, who haven't got that uh, that relationship, though, isn't it? It's those people who maybe they're not getting along with their spouses or those people who are living on their own. Or they, they do, they've got a brilliant family and everything. They're one paycheck from going under. Mm, exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know you can get some help with, you know, mortgage relief and, and what have you, but it's, um, it's, it's just a hard place to be, isn't it, really, for, for, for anybody? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously my concern, because when this all happened, it was like, what's going to happen to the homeless and, and all that sort of stuff? And I was, I was stopping in a hotel this week, 
um, like a travel lodge in Cambridge. And what they'd done, which was great, I thought it was a real good thing, that they, they took all the rough sleepers in and they put them in, in the, the travel, travel lodges. Um, but they, as I was walking out this morning, they started to, they started to throw them out. It's the wrong word, really. They're starting to ask them to leave now. Mm. So these people who've been in, um, had somewhere to stop all of a sudden and now being asked to leave. Yeah, unfortunately. But are those all the points on depression? I know we keep jumping in. Oh, yeah, yeah. So so that you've got 10 points there. So and the, the last one, well, you've got the last two would be loss of interest in things that used to make you happy. I know you've got any, any, any comments there, experience there. I know it's it, it, it sometimes can be a lot harder. If you the more time you've got, sometimes the less you do. Don't, you, know, you know, if you yeah. if you're at work and you, and you know you're sort of like right, well, I've got an hour to go and train tonight. So you get out there, you do it, you get back. Whereas if you're sitting in the house more than normal, sometimes you've got less energy, haven't you? You, you know, you, you you just don't want to do anything. So even stuff like your hobbies, you know, loss of interest and, and, and things that used to make you happy. And the last one really is, is no any, having no energy and being tired. So you've got 10 points there. So lots of confidence, self-esteem. You know, you, you, these are all stuff that we can look for in ourselves and other people. So I'll, I'll just go over them again quickly. So loss of confidence, self-esteem, feelings of guilt, even when it's not your fault. Persons having suicidal thoughts or wishing they weren't alive. Difficulty in making decisions and concentrating, pessimistic views of the future, not sleeping enough or sleeping too much, no interest in food, eating too much, sad moods that won't shift or go away, lots of interesting things that used to make me happy, and no energy and feeling tired. Well, that's brilliant. So there's some things to keep your eyes out for yourselves and your loved ones. But the next one I'm going to ask you, is uh, you know, this is take and I, I learned so much when I did your course, and I was so grateful me and my mom went on it because I, I believe these courses that you and Matt are doing should be in every boxing club, every cricket, football club, in every business. Because, as you rightly said, if someone cuts their arm, you can see that's bleeding. Hang on, mate, I'll get your bandage. Yeah, but we need to see these small signs. Well, Kev's normally a happy, bubbly chat, he's not normally that, he's not this way. So I, I really thought, and we'll mention this at the end of the thing about this course you're doing, and something I learned so much about was self-harm. So could you yeah. tell us those signs, please? Yeah, yeah. Well, self-harm, this, again, this, this probably going to sound really, um, really perverse, but self-harm is self a favourite of mine, <laughs> for want of a better word. But I find it really fascinating, and, and I link it very much to, and I might be wrong here, you know, to a full-on professional, I probably think it's very wrong, but... I link self harm very much closely to addiction, um, which is something that I, I, I went through myself. And it's sort of doing something to yourself. The, the easiest way I can explain self harm is doing something to yourself that gives you just momentary relief, but you know the consequences are going to be quite bad. So <coughs> even linking to addiction, you know, you 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 use a drug, you feel better for a little while, and then you're locked in the, the addiction circle. Um, and self harm can be very much the same, you know. But people are people are using it as a coping mechanism. They're cutting themselves. Um, but yeah, self harm's self harm is embroiled in secrecy and shame. So you've got to be well. You've got to be very careful of. You suspect that somebody might be um, self harming. And, and some of the things you you know you, you look at for self harm is cutting. Yeah, so you've got your cutting. You've got your burning and scaldings, even cold burns. Yeah. Hitting themselves, hair pulling, biting themselves, scratching, breaking bones, and interfering with the wounds that they've got as well. Yeah. So it's always to 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 feel that pain, and, and there's there's different sorts of um, self harm. You've got compulsive, impulsive, and ritualistic. It's very hard to try and give. I mean, even on the course, you know, you we spend a bit of time on it there, don't we? And we only get a little taste of what self harm's about. It, it doesn't doesn't do it justice, you know. Um, so it's just really it's just if I, if, I, if I could say one thing about self harm, and if if there are people there who are spending more time around their children or their partners, and they might be noticing that something might not be right, you might be noticing maybe some self harm might be going on. You've got to ask the question. You've got to, you've got to ask it with respect, and you can't you can't be shaming them. 
you know, you don't you can't try and stop them. You're not going to stop them. But maybe having an open conversation with them, taking the shame away from it, saying, look, it is what it is. You're doing what you're doing. How can I help? How can, how can we get you past it? Because there's no conversation you're going to have that's going to stop it there and then. And the worst thing well, is for parents. Sorry. No, you can It's when people just go like, oh, for God's sake, Kevin, stop cutting yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, but it's, it, you'd say, you know, you can't say to an alcoholic, for God's sake, to stop drinking, or a, a, an intravenous user, to God's sake, stop injecting heroin, or for God's sake, stop smoking crack. If they could, they would, wouldn't they? And it's understanding that. And do you know what we've got to get past with, with the self-harm, and I think which is the main thing is it's not attention-seeking. It's not. Because it's attention seeking's got the the, the 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 even the word attention seeking it's got just really negative connotations to it, hasn't it? I prefer to call it support seeking. Mm. Maybe people are looking for a bit of support. Um, they don't want everyone to know what's going on. It's very, a lot of the time, it's very hidden, and again wrapped in shame. So it's not attention seeking. I think that's where a lot of parents can maybe, through their own fear, get angry. I get it. You know, somebody you love is hurting themselves. You just want them to stop. And you'll lock them in the room if you have to. You just want it to stop. But it's counterproductive. You know, you you, you you need to be able to sit with them and sort of say, do you know why you do it? A lot of the time, they're not going to know why they do it. They just know they've got a pain inside that they need to get out. And again, I think sometimes the easiest way to explain it, I think we've all been guilty of punching the wall, haven't we? We've yeah. all punched the walls or, kill, or kick something. And it's it's get, it's get dispelling that, that feeling, that frustration and anger, getting it out, even though what happens to do it hurts. So, self harm's a big and Kev, really. But all I'd say is, if you feel that it might be happening, choose your time right, and 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 choose your choose your demeanour the right way. You know, don't don't put them down or shame them. Just just ask the question. You know, are, are you hurting yourself? You know, man, that, that might be what gets you in and gets gets you to helping them out. Brilliant. Brilliant. And the last one, before we talk about your course and everything else, is the big one. It's uh, when people, when you suspect someone you love or someone you know is thinking about completing suicide. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, suicide's a big, isn't it? You know, I've just been looking at some some of the facts and figures. You know, I've got some here, you know. There's like six over six thousand five hundred suicides in, in in the UK and 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 Ireland in 2018. I think it's a lot. That's fourteen men a day. It's four women. And even if you look at the, the 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 figures in that as well, how many men are doing it compared to how many women? But women are rising. It's on the rise. And that, that you know, it, a lot of the work we're doing at Mental Health First Services. Is, is guided by suicide because we've we done the assist training so we, we can train people to um, help somebody out who might be it might be having suicidal thoughts so a lot of our work is based around that but we're noticing a lot more women are, it, the, the, the numbers starting to rise so we need to make sure we're we're not we're not looking at that we need to look at it as well you know the, the, the ladies out there that's struggling as well um, but suicide's a hard one, mate, isn't it? You know, I've got a few things there that you, you, you might want to look out for. So, sudden dramatic mood changes. You know, you're going to spend a lot of time with these people. Um, if it's your partner or your kids or someone you know, you've got to keep an eye out for sudden sort of mood changes. Putting their affairs in order. Do you know what I mean by that? What, what, what that would be? Sort of, you know, cancelling the paper, cancelling a subscription. Um, making sure things are things are paid, you know, you might just notice they're starting to get things set out for for, for when they go. Um, giving away present possessions, even prize possessions, you know, giving away bikes, asking some people to look after the pets. Can you look after? Can you, do, you know, if I'm not there, you guys look after look after Rover. Um, like we said earlier as well, no no sort of no future plans. You know, you're asking about where you're going on holiday. What what you know what what you're looking forward to what what you're getting what you're doing for Christmas stuff like that ask somebody what they got planned for Christmas it, it, that can be, it can be a really good question to ask and, and see where they're at because 
I'm not saying everybody who don't know what's going on for Christmas is looking to 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 to, to complete suicide, but you, you might start off that conversation. Um, withdrawing from family and friends, you know that, that then you know random up people normally they they start to come away from them because they'll know that these people will be noticing the, the dramatic changes in them, so they're trying they'll try and come away with you. Feelings of hopelessness, yeah. Again, just just having no interest and just. Don't think they can. Don't think there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And an in increased use of drugs and alcohol. It's hard at this moment in time, isn't it? I spoke to somebody the other day, and they thought, you know what? They're going to be. Everyone's going to come out an alcoholic. Everyone's just drinking, aren't they? Yeah. And and then you 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 add the sun into the mix as well. It's difficult, isn't it? Um, people tend to be drinking more. Uh, well, and, the weather's been a bonus and a curse, hasn't it? Because can you imagine if it had just been tipping it down for these last eight weeks and then you just locked in your house? Yeah, but, yeah. But when, but when the sun's out, you have a barbecue, you have a couple of cans because, oh, it's sunny and Englishmen in the sun, we just get it down us, don't we? Yeah, and the rain, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and the snow and the hail. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the young ones as well. Maybe... A, you know, they might have a preoccupation with death, or have, you know, they might be going onto these. This, there's like suicide chat rooms. Same with self harm as well as self harm chat rooms. All stuff you've got to keep an eye on. Um, and, and one of the one things I think, and you know, I sort of end with this on on the, on the suicide one as far as signs and symptoms. You know, signs to look out for. And it was one that sort of shocked me quite a lot. And it's a scary one, really, but. Sudden recovery. So you notice that somebody's really down and you're worried about them and you're thinking, oh, you know, I, I am concerned about you know, how they are. And all of a sudden, they're fine. Do you think, that Ian, that's because they, they know it's going to be over? Exactly. There's relief in knowing it's going to be yeah. over. They've made the decision, Lee. They've sort of said to himself, look, you know, they're living in pain. And let's remember the people who, who take their own lives. It's, it's not that they don't want to live. It's not that they want to die. They just don't, they just don't want to live in the, the, the life that they're in. You know, the pain is that much for them. And they're probably getting to the point where they're thinking, they've made a decision. It's going to happen at this time, on that day. And they, that probably gives them a little bit of sense of relief because they know the pain's going to end then. So you've always got to be careful with sudden recovery. Just keep, you know, that doesn't mean... You, you've seen a lot of these stars. You know, I think there's that one from, I, I don't, was it Limp Biscuit or something like that? And you, on the day that he takes his own life, he's, he's sitting there laughing. But I think he'd made the choice, you know, it's, it's or, or not, I don't know. But just just be really aware of the, the sudden recovery because that can be a big one. Has there been any data at the moment? Has it come out yet of, uh, like, an increased suicide? You, you're not going to get it yet, Kev. Um, and funny enough, it, you, it's strange you're saying that, but, I mean, some of the figures we've got now, 2018, it, it's, it's hard data to try and, to try and collect, really, or, or it, it takes a long time to get through. It will be really interesting. It's, 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 it's the same as the, will there be a, an upsurge in, in, in babies? You know, you, you, but you just, you, as far as suicide... We're not collect we haven't collected the data as yet, I don't think, especially with COVID nineteen being so focused on. Uh but no, in answer to your question, there's there's no data as yet. No data. Well that's brilliant. That, I mean I've I've I think that's such a, a great insight you've given to everyone. And then this course, as I say, me and my mom have we did the two day course, but you're gonna be doing a, a half day course over Zoom, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well what we've got is, and you've got this for adult and you've got it for youth as well. Now, I'd always say that prepare for you, of course, because it, do you know what? If it's, if it's a two day course that you don't use, good stuff. But if it's a two day course that you need stuff, you need that you need that knowledge. I, I've seen people, you know, we train people and going back to the self harm stuff, you know, when, we, when we're training people, we're training people how to deal with this situation. You know, rather than shouting at your daughter for cutting herself, ask her why she's doing it. You know, just 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 take the the fear factor out of it, and everyone should do that course. I think everyone should do it as part of parenting, if nothing else. It taught me loads, really. Am. 
Um, and so going back to that, we, we do an adult course, we do a youth course. So you've got a two day course, a one day course, and a half day course. The two day course that you did is the equivalent to a physical first aider. So it means you get a certificate, you, 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 you class as a first aider, and you would be expected to help in a crisis situation. But you've also got the skills then to deal with a situation that might be a bit longer, not a crisis. Yeah. And we look at depression, anxiety, psychosis, suicide, self harm, um, things like schizophrenia, um, lots of lots lots of stuff in there. Um, but what we do concentrate on as well is 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 self care, because if you're doing this sort of stuff with people, it's sixty year, and you need to be able to recognise signs in yourself as well. So yeah, the two day course is recommended to anyone. By the way, we're doing that in youth and adult. And after the 29th, we're going to be able to do that via Zoom. So you can do that from the comfort of your own home. The course that you did, Kev, we'll be able to do that via Zoom. So for all you guys and, and all the people who view you and watch you, just keep, just, just just watch this space. As soon as it comes about, I'll put it out there and we'll, we'll, we'll get some people trained up. And if, um, people, are, if people are interested, um, yeah. then send the Black Country blokes uh, a message then we can always put uh, we can for you forward, let me make the word says, forward you yeah. in details. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ian, is there um, an email address that can contact you directly on and we'll add that to the show notes as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, do, I can, I'll give it you now. Do you want me to watch as well? Can I put it into? You, you, you give it, giving us now. When, um, you're giving us now because if people are watching, they'll, they'll, hopefully they'll take it and I'll also put it in the course notes, in the uh, in the notes, sorry, on, the, on Facebook and YouTube. Okay. There you go. So that should have come over. Uh, so inquire at mhfa at gmail dot com. Um, just come on to it. We're doing. We'll be do. We're doing the one. So we're doing the one days as well. What I'm doing on the uh, the first date I've got, which is June the fifth. No, sorry, June the thirteenth. I'm doing one on June the fifth for the company that I work for. June the thirteenth, we're going to do an, an adult. Um, and an adult half day. Uh, they're going. It's, it's going to be quite discounted because people are going to be at home. But we need to get the book sent out to you. And what we'll do, we'll do it like this. So we'll all be we'll all be there. And the, the half course is quite good. It's an awareness course, if nothing else. Mm. Um, so yeah, inquire about that. It's it, it'll be it'll definitely be a good experience. And I think it's going to be good with what's going on with COVID. Going out there with a little bit more knowledge about what mental health's about because it's going to be a big for us when we get out there. Um, but what I am doing as well is I'm doing a free course, which is what I call a mental health community, familiarisation community course. And it's two, three hours. And we just brush on stuff. We just look at things a little bit. And I'll be doing that by, by Zoom on May the 31st, which is a Sunday. And I'll be doing it between five and eight. Again, free to come on. First come, first serve. I think we'll have to look at how many people have, probably about 20. But yeah inquire on the, that, that email as well and uh that, that they're all free that those are free the what the mhfa courses we do we have to charge for because you have to buy books and obviously we pay for our own training we, you know we've got we've got a charge for that of course um and but the i, I would definitely recommend the two-day course that's going that that's i mean you take that to an employer you go you go in an interview and say you might have first day that it shows you know what you're talking about you know they, they're good courses came out now they the, the first day courses I thoroughly enjoyed it because everyone knows by now I can't see very well. Uh, I'm not very good at reading, writing, but it wasn't that kind of course. Because nah. when you say to someone like me, uh, you go on a course, my heart starts racing, I'm thinking, oh my God. But it's a lot of interaction. Like I didn't do any reading whatsoever. They had the books, but because of my eyes, I couldn't read it. And the group was very great because they were asking questions. And it was very, it, it, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't have asked you on. Yeah, and, no, yeah, yeah. No, I do you know what I love is we people come on the courses and, and I've not really come across anybody who said they didn't like it, even if it wasn't for them, because not things can't be for everyone, can they? But they've even then they've said but it is interesting. But what we find is especially I, I mean I train them and my, my, my colleague who trains with me, we bring a bit of ourselves to the course. It's not death by PowerPoint, you know. We we for want of a better word, we have a, a giggle as well, don't we? You know, we we're talking about serious stuff for two days solid, you know, and uh, we all get to know each other. We start to talk about our own stories. You don't have to, you don't want to, 
But you know, you, you make you make friends on these things, and and you get to hear what. There's nothing better than learning from other people because we can teach it all out of a book all we want or from a PowerPoint. But you sit with people, you learn how it's done, you learn how, how things really happen, don't you? And you've got 16 other people, 15 other people in that room, and then two of us with the the trainers. It's uh, it's an experience. It, it's definitely it's definitely worth the time. So I remember when I come on it. Obviously, I wouldn't say anything that people were saying, but it was eye opening to hear about how some people had gone through stuff and. To, to look at them, you'd have had no idea because when you have got mental health or previous addictions or something, you haven't got a big sticker on your head saying suicidal or depressed or user. They, they carry that in the back pocket. And when you've got these normal people and teachers and these, you know, supposed to be people who go, well, yeah, I, I thought about completing suicide or I used to have this drug problem or I used to. And it, it, it brings it into the light. And I think... Yeah. Shame keeps in the dark, and shame is a killer. Yeah, and 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 that's it's shame and stigma. Do you know what? Just I, I was an addict for a long time in my life, and it it, it, it taught me more than, than than most stuff. And I'm not embarrassed about it. I'm not ashamed about it because if I was, I'd be dead. If I was ashamed of being an addict, I'd be dead because it would keep me there. You've got, you know, and, 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 and these all people sitting around, we all talk about our own stories. Each one of us have got our own story and each one, mm. of, each one of us has got our own way of dealing with stuff and we can adopt and lend stuff off each other. And like I say, it, I think it just, it take, it, it, it brings the shame from around mental health a little bit, the, the, the knowledge and the training. Well, that's been brilliant. I'm going to uh, thank you again. What we're going to do now, I'm going to ask you the same question I've asked everyone this week, and we've been on live every day this week, this Mental Health Awareness Week, and it is, what positives do you hope are going to come from this lockdown with mental health? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I see, a positive in, I see a positive in it already because if this would have happened five years ago, the lockdown, I don't think mental health would have even been mentioned. But which is if we're all ready for it now, or we've all got an understanding about it. You've got in every time you you hear physical stuff mentioned, you hear mental health uh, health it mentioned. So I think I'm really proud of the way mental health's been put forward in, in the COVID nineteen situation. The company I work for, we're offering courses out to everybody who works for us. We've got a twenty four hour hotline, helpline. Sorry, uh, anyone can get in touch with us. We we it's it's in our risk assessments. You know, if you're struggling with anxiety or anything else, talk to us. It's not a weakness. I can really see, if anything, the COVID-19 situation, the lockdown, has shown me that even though mental health has been the buzzword for a while and everyone's trying to get on the bandwagon a little bit, I think people's actual feelings is mental health, mental health. You know, we've got a, it's not to be seen as a weakness. So I think there's been positives already. And the last question, mate. Have you got any sayings or quotes that have helped you get through tough times? Yeah, it's something that was said to me, really, when, when I was training as a, as a therapist. And it was, you know, because if you're trying to talk to somebody about what they're doing or what's going on for them, you've got to tell them the truth, haven't you? Because there's no point otherwise. And sometimes I've known the times when people haven't told the truth and that person hasn't, hasn't got back because they haven't had the right advice. So... My one that I like is, is say what you mean, but don't say it mean. Yeah, I love that saying. And that's uh, when I did your course, me and my mum both loved it because how true that is. Now, if you've enjoyed Ian's um, chat today, like I have, he's also been on the show in the when we were in the real world when it comes to the boxing club. So please look through uh, their episodes and check it out. As this one is, it's a great listen. So I'd just like to say thank you to all the guests who've been on this week. We're going to be joined by Dan Browning, uh, who's a big part of Tough Enough to Care on Tuesday, 6 o'clock, same place. So thank you for staying with us all week. Take care of yourselves and each other. ta a bit. Stay safe. Listen, listen, listen. And that's a wrap for another show. But if there are any comments or messages that you'd like us to read out for our next podcast, please be in touch. There are also lots of different organisations at the bottom of this page and hopefully they can help you or someone you care about. Please share this to spread the word. Until we talk next time, ta a bit. 
Listen.